Well, hello, rock hounds, rock lovers, rock nerds. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to have another little session at the Lortone Lapidary Saw, cutting into some rocks I brought back from the West. Um, this time I've got rocks I picked up at the rock shops. We did a, a whole day of nothing but visiting South Dakota rock shop one day while we were out there. So I'll put a link to that video in the upper right. It was a blast. Everybody had a fantastic time. Everybody came back with a lot of neat rocks, including me. I got some neat rocks here. And we're going to cut some of them today. Um, we're also going to work on a project I started in the last video where I was working with the saw. And I'll talk more about that in a second. But let's look at the rocks we're going to cut today, okay? Uh, got some tiger eye. I really want to cut into this and see what it looks like because even uncut the kind of flashing it's doing is amazing and I know there's a name for that but it slips my mind right now my buddy Jim told me what the uh, what the correct term for that flash is when you tilt the tiger eye but uncut it's amazing I'm thinking cut it's gonna be super fantastic so we want to cut some of that today I've got some mukite here and I've been wanting to work with mukite for a while, so I came back with a ugh, big old chunk of mukite from one of the rock shops we visited. So I'm going to cut into that. Uh, mukite is an, an Australian jasper, and I've got another piece of Australian jasper here. It's not mukite, it's something else. Um, it's not nearly as interesting looking as mukite, but we'll see what it's like when I cut it. Maybe it's pretty when it's cut, okay? And then I've got a mystery rock over here that I paid a whole four dollars for for a couple pounds of this mystery rock but I can see it looks like it's got some banding in it so I'm going to go cut into it and see what we can expose with the saw you know it's it's always a crap shoot you don't know there's anything good in the rock when you cut it you know it may be good it may not be and then the project I want to finish up is a set of bookends I was making out of this really dark banded iron I mean at first I didn't really like the looks of this stuff but it's kind of grown on me. Uh, but before we get to cutting this, I need to uh, epoxy in some pieces that spalled out during the last cutting session. And I also want to go over some of the fissures in it with some crazy glue and give that a chance to uh, harden up before I put this back in the saw and start cutting on it again. Um, I need to uh, cut this face on both of these flat, expose some of the nice internal banding, and uh, just just cut that flat, and then, you know, I should have a nice set of bookends. So, uh, so that's what we're going to do today. And uh, what do we want to start with? Well, I really want to start with the tiger eye. So I think we will start with the tiger eye and then move on to some of this other stuff. So let me get this into the saw, and we'll get to cutting. Alrighty, let's get this into the saw. Uh, and yes, the saw is still a red mess from um, the banded iron I was cutting in the last session. I have cleaned about 10 pounds of goop out of it and put some fresh mineral oil in, but I'm not done cutting banded iron, I'm pretty sure, so I think I'm just going to leave it like it is for the moment because towards the end of this session I'm planning on cutting some more banded iron, so the banded iron is what really makes the saw oil ugly, so, and leaves the red stuff all over the inside. I'm going to put tiger eye in. I'm going to take a thin slice, a very thin slice off this one edge over here. And, and please bear with me, I have a big fan running blowing on me, and it's probably making a little noise on the video. But it's supposed to be a real scorcher today. It's only about 10 o'clock in the morning, and it's already really hot. So we'll see how long I can stand to be out here in the heat cutting stuff with this saw. So anyway, there's there's the tiger eye in. I'm going to take, like I said, just a thin slice off of it to try and clean up that edge. And then maybe I'll crank it out and take a few slabs off. I could also, this, this edge over here is fairly straight. I could also clean it up and take some long slabs off. So we'll see. Let me just... Uh, get one cut on it to start with and we'll see what it looks like, okay? Might talk about some improvements I want to make to the saw down the road too in this video. Okay, so here we go. So, we'll be back in about 20 minutes when that's done. 
All right, while we're waiting for that cut to happen, I'm going to prep this, wiping it down with a little bit of ass, a rag with some acetone on it, because this was all covered with oil during the cut, so I'm thinking epoxy isn't going to want to stick to it very well. So let me clean these pieces up a little bit with acetone. And then I will epoxy them back in place. And hopefully they will stick through the next cut. All right, let me get some epoxy. Well, I heard a thud and was about to stop the saw off when it stopped itself. Not sure why it stopped. Oh, I see. My um, emergency stop chain is wrapped around this knob right here. That's why it stopped. Okay, that explains it. I will have to fix that before the next cut. Let's have a look and see what we've got here underneath this goof. Hey. That's ah, pretty amazing. Even all dirty, it's it's really flashing at me. And I went and looked at the at the at the message my friend Jim sent me. Apparently that flash is called chatotancy. Okay, I'll take it, whatever. But wow, that is really beautiful. We'll take a close-up look at this on the bench. And I think what I will do is I will... Uh, this stuff's holding together really good. So I shouldn't have to take a, a really thick slab off. I'll take about a quarter-inch slab off of this thing. And I will unwrap the chain. So this thing won't abort its cut too early again. Let me get this forward enough we can get another cut off of it only about a quarter inch or so I'm thinking is all it's going to need yeah alright mm, tighten that down good see the chain is unwrapped and free so we should be good to go for another cut okay here we go let's go take a look at this piece up on the bench Okay, the, the new piece is just starting to cut. I don't know if that uh, Shadow Tansy Shimber is showing up on the video or not. It's really hard to tell on the viewfinder. But wow, that is amazing to my eye. Just amazing. All right, so we'll see what the, uh, the slab that comes off looks like. It should be good on both sides. So, yeah. All right, let's see. Okay, I'm uh, mixing up some JB Weld epoxy here. If you've ever used this stuff before, you know it comes in a black and a white component. You put them out in equal amounts and mix them. And I'm thinking this is going to be the best epoxy to use because... Look at the color match. Yeah, not too shabby, huh? Alright. So I'm going to glue these pieces back in that's falled out before I do the next cut. And this is a this is a quick setting epoxy from JB Weld. This is not the 24 hour stuff. So hopefully this will be strong enough to withstand the next cut and it won't be a really obvious break in there. Yeah. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty darn, pretty darn good, yep. And this piece has got to go in there.
may not have mixed up quite enough, but most of this piece is going to get cut off in the next cut, so I'm not too worried about it. It's just got to hold together for the cut. Yeah. A little bit to fill the crack. Give this thing a flash polish. You probably won't even notice the cracks there. Perfect. All right. So we'll let that harden up. And uh, later on we'll cut it. Okay, I've got some um, cyanoacrylate glue here, also known as crazy glue. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run some of it down these fissures in this rock here before I cut it again, just to help hold it together. I'll wipe up some of this excess too. I have found that this will help hold a rock together that's got some fissures in it. I, I kind of doubt it will break along most of these fissures, but you know, better safe than sorry. And like I said, I'll give the face of this rock, you know, a quick flash polish, and that will get any uh, glue or epoxy residue off of it. It won't be visible. So. so hopefully that has soaked in a little bit. I'm not using the really thick stuff, I'm using the really thin stuff, so it tends to get pulled by capillary action down into these cracks pretty well. Yeah. A little more on that one. Alright, we'll let this all dry up. The glue and the epoxy. And then uh, we'll be ready for the final cut on this, I think. Okay, I heard a thud and then the cutting action got quiet. I turned the saw off. Yeah, we got a slab. It's a whole slab. It all held together. I was thinking it would. This stuff looks pretty tough. Now, as I understand tiger eye, it's actually metamorphosed asbestos. Where the asbestos fibers in here have been replaced by quartz. But I'm thinking the fibrous structure of it is what's holding it together. Wow, even even dirty with oil. And in the dark over here at the saw, that looks amazing. That really looks amazing. That is so cool. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take off one more slab and then decide whether I wanna cut another side of this rock or not, okay? Just do one more slab because that is just so cool and I don't have to cut them thick that's great about a quarter inch thick is holding together nice perfect for cabbing excellent is that thick enough maybe a little thin maybe not quite a quarter inch there we go. don't want to make them too thin tempt fate and we'll cut another one and let's just take a look at this this is this is cool okay, here's the first one we cut that's I got the rough back on it and then here's the slab I just oh yeah that's showing up on the uh, on the viewfinder nice that shimmer chateau tansy sounds French I don't know but yeah wow that is nice these are some nice, nice slabs of uh, tiger eye. I wish I was more of an artist, could do more stuff with this. Might send this, some of this stuff to our artist friend in Wyoming for uh, as a thank you for telling us where their collecting area is. I'll put a link in the upper right to uh, one of my collecting days out in Wyoming where I found a lot of the rocks that have been cut in here. The, the, not the ones I found at the uh, at the rock shops, but the ones I actually found out in the field collecting myself. Might send her some of this. Um, but boy, this stuff's pretty. 
I'm wondering. I might I might have to put some of this up on eBay and sell it to other people who can do something useful with it because I'm not enough of an artist to make anything good out of it and it's a shame for it to go to waste. So, yeah, that is cool. All right, let's see what the next slab looks like. Then we'll decide what to do next. Oh, there's a hawk out there. Hear him? All right, cut's done. Ooh, let the mist out. Go. Another whole slab there. I like how this stuff doesn't break. I'm only cutting it maybe a quarter of an inch thick. This one might even be a little less than a quarter. But wow, it's holding together nice. That's got an interesting pattern in it there too. Wow. All right. So let's uh, have a look at these pieces up on the bench and decide what I want to do next, huh? So here's my three cuts so far. One, two, three. And I'll tell you what, they just keep looking better. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah, I wish I was more of an artist. Could do something with this stuff. I hate mangling a beautiful stone. You know, when I know there's artists out there who can do something good with it. Like I said, I may send some off to our artist friend in Wyoming. I may put some up on eBay. We'll see. Of course, you know, I don't have a cabbing machine. Not yet. Not yet. I'm not ruling it out for the future. In the future, you know, maybe I'll start trying to make some artistic stuff, some jewelry out of these rocks I cut myself. So, we'll see. Okay, so the tiger eye is amazing. I think I'm going to stop cutting on it and leave the bulk of it for the future. Figure out what I want to do with it. And we'll cut something else. So what do I want to cut next? Well, let's try this stuff. I know the bukite's going to be amazing. I mean, there's no doubt about that. This is kind of a crapshoot. I don't know whether it's going to be good or not. This stuff, I don't know. You know, let's let's give it a shot. I'm thinking, uh, how do I want to cut this? It's a really good question. How do I want to cut this? I think if I get it in there like that, I can just cut across this edge and we'll get a good look at what it looks like cut and cleaned up and then uh, decide what to do from there. Either take some slabs off, move it around and cut a different face or just uh, move on to something else. So let me get the uh, tiger eye out of the saw, get this in and uh, we'll try a cut on it. Okay, so there's the tiger eye out. That is so amazing. That is so pretty. And then uh, we'll get this in and see what it looks like. Okay, I got that Australian Jasper in there. There's probably a name for this particular Jasper. If no, somebody knows what it is, let me know. At the rock shop where I bought it, it just said Australian Jasper. It didn't, didn't have a specific name, but I'll bet there's a specific name for this stuff. Whatever it is, I got no clue. Anyway, first cut, I'm not really trying to get a thick slab off. I'm just trying to clean up this edge so we can see what it looks like from the side after it's cleaned up. We might get a little bit of a slab if it's, uh, if it's hard enough to hold together. We'll see. Now, let's get her cut. Because it's getting towards midday and it's hot out here. Get this done. All right, the cut is done. Let's see what we've got. Well, we got pretty much most of a slab there. That's interesting. Let's see what we got. See, that does look pretty good. Yeah, like I said before, if there's anybody out there who knows what the name of this particular Australian Jasper is, let me know. Because at the rock shop where I bought it, they just had it labeled as Australian Jasper. It didn't have its proper name. But that's that's nice. Let me um, let me cut a good quarter inch thick slab out of this and see how that looks. There we go. That's about a quarter of an inch. This stuff seems pretty tough. That thin piece held together nice, so I feel like I need to cut a really thick slab out of it. So let's get her cut and see what we get. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, this stuff's holding together nice. That's excellent. Ooh, look at 
look at that. We got some color in there. Yeah, we got some neat colors in there. That's pretty cool. I'm liking this stuff. I thought it was going to be kind of bland and boring based on what it looked like on the outside, but you know, it's pretty cool on the inside. I think I'm going to cut one more slab off. We'll take a look at this one up on the bench. Another quarter inch or so, because this stuff's holding together good. I don't have to cut it really thick, which is nice. If I like these slabs, I can get a lot of them out of it. All right. Let's uh, cut another one and have a look at this one. Okay, so here's the two pieces I've cut off so far. This was uh, the first piece to true up the edge. And then here's the first real slab. And that's kind of interesting. It's got some orange in it, some pink, some red, white. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. I'm liking that. So we'll cut this other slab off, have a look at it, and then decide what to do next. All right, so here's the, the third piece I've cut off. Very nice again. Looking good. Solid, rock solid. Hey, it is a rock, isn't it? Um, so I can cut thin slabs out of it. That's nice. Um, here's the main rock. There's a lot of material left here. You can cut a lot more slabs out of it. Now, I went inside during the cut and, to get out of the heat and sit down in the air conditioning a little bit. And um, I sat down in front of my computer and did a little research. And um, I did a Google search, of, a, a Google image search for Australian Jaspers. And um, the closest thing I came up with that kind of looks like this is something called Pingaling Jasper. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I hope I am not butchering it. Um, if there's any Aussies out there in the audience, let me know if this is Pingaling Jasper, and if I'm pronouncing it right. If not, hey, okay, correct my pronunciation, okay? But yeah, this is this is pretty stuff, and I think polished up, it would be even prettier. Yeah. But uh, again, I'm gonna save this. Um, I'm not gonna cut all this all this rock all. I'm not gonna cut this rock into all slabs. I'm gonna save myself a big chunk of it for the future, what I might want to do with it. We got these three pieces, so uh, this one's kind of thin and irregular, so I don't think it's too useful, but these two are nice. All right, so what next? Well, of course, we've got we've got these two pieces left, and we've got the, uh, the bookends, but I think I'll save the bookends for last, because they're really going to mess up the oil in the, in the saw. So um, it's down to the Mookite and the Mystery Rock. And really, I want to know what this Mystery Rock is. My $4 Mystery Rock here. Uh, yeah, there we go. You can see the price tag now. Um, I mean, it looks like it's got some nice color bands in it there. It looks like it might be kind of agatized in this area on this side. So how do I want to do this? Well... I guess I can maybe try to get it in the machine and shave off this side a little bit and see what it looks like underneath this crust. And then maybe turn it around and shave this side off and see what it looks like. So, yeah, let me do that. Let me cut this side first. And uh, if that's interesting, maybe we'll take some slabs off. If it's not, we'll flip it around and see what it looks like under this side. We may flip it around and see what it looks like under this side anyway. All right, let me get it in the saw. And you may be thinking to yourself, why is he worried about messing up the oil in the saw when it already looks like that? Well, trust me, when I start cutting banded iron in here, it's going to get a whole, whole lot worse. Alright, it's going to look like there's been a massacre. An absolute massacre. Everything will be blood red and nasty looking. Nastier than this by far. Yeah, this one's, I don't know, this one's going to be tough. I really don't like this vise. I was talking about possible changes I would like to make to this saw, which I have named Lazarus, by the way, for all the times I've brought it back from the dead. Um, yeah, I need to make some changes to Lazarus here. And this vise and the lid are two things on the list doing. I mean, 
most most rock saws, when they come new from the factory these days, have a vise that clamps this way. Not one that clamps vertically like this. So this this vise is kind of okay for really large stones or really long stones. But for small stones, irregular stones, kind of like this one, that's so great. So I'm thinking about making a modification. And I'll show you really quick what my idea is. So I'm thinking about mounting a vise like this in here. Maybe a larger one, because this won't hold very cute large stones. Uh, maybe put some some wood pieces on the in the jaws so that the uh, so that they don't mar the stones, steel against the stone, and uh, taller so I can clamp the the stones higher up. So that's what I'm thinking about doing is mounting something like this in here. You know, I'd have to make some changes. I have to cut this side off and find a way to bolt it down. But uh, hey, it's doable. I built a lot more complicated stuff in my life. All right, so I think we are ready to go. Make sure this is good and tight, because I've been yammering instead of paying attention. All right, it's good and tight. That's tight. We're going to take probably close to half an inch at the thickest, but this is all rounded over here. So it'll be really thin at this end, really thin at this end, about a half inch thick in the middle, and we'll see what we've got. So let's get to cutting. Alright, let's see what we got. Missed out. Well, will you check that out? It's kind of porous. It's got a lot of little pits in it, but it's got a lot of color, bands of color in there. That's some interesting, I guess, Jasper. All right, let me crank the blade in and see if I can do a quarter inch slice off of it. And we'll look at the one I got up on the bench. Well, this stone turned out to be a lot more colorful than I was expecting. I like surprises like that. I mean, it doesn't look like all that from this side, but... Yeah, look at what's on the inside. It'll be interesting to see. We'll get a thicker slice off of it and see what it looks like. All right, my $4 mystery rock's turning out not to be a waste of money, maybe. Cool. All right, so I guess my $4 rock turned out to be pretty nice on the inside. So here's the second slice right here. It's got some interesting colors in it. It's got some orange, some yellow, some green, some red, some pink. You know, it just kind of runs the whole gamut there, the entire rainbow. And uh, this area in here, there's very few pits in it. Now, I, I didn't have enough travel to go in and make another slab, right? I probably cut another slab off, but yeah, I could uh, put this back in the saw and cut another slab or two off of it, I'm thinking. Especially if I get that better vise in there, like I was saying, because this, this is getting pretty thin and it's getting hard to hold with... Uh, that vertical vise, but a horizontal vise could hold it. And uh, we can get some more slabs off of it. So I think I'm going to save this until after I have the saw modified and it'll be easier to cut some more slabs off of it. Because this area in here, not only is it very colorful, but it uh, doesn't have a lot of pits and voids in it. That that could be cabbed. And that's, that's beautiful. That is some beautiful jasper. That is a nice $4 rock. I'm glad I picked that up. I'm glad I saw it. Glad I bought it. All right, let's move this aside. Time to consider the Mookite. Now, where do I want to start slabbing on the Mookite? It's a, always a question. Where do you want to start? Well, I want to cut it so that I sort of maximize the amount of stone that I can get out of it. So I could start along this face. 
which would probably be pretty. Or I could start along that face, which might be pretty. Um, I could start along this face, which is kind of a mystery. Hard to say what's in there. Um, I also have to be aware of the fact that if I try to cut it, that's probably five plus to six inches across. That's probably about the as much travel as I've got in the saw. So I don't know if I'd get a complete cut. Uh, I'll tell you what. Let's try cutting this side first. And if I don't like it, we'll cut this side. Because I think this side's definitely going to be pretty. And uh, we'll cut this rind off this side over here and see what it looks like underneath. Okay? Okay, the mukites in the saw. I'm just going to take a thin cut off this side. Take this rind off and we'll see what it looks like underneath. I've got plenty of travel. I can go in and get some slabs off if it looks nice. If it doesn't, maybe I'll turn it and cut it along that face. Okay. Let's get the saw closed up, get it going, see what it looks like. Alright, saw went quiet. Let's see what we got. Misty. Yeah. Hey. There's our mookite. Oh yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Nice or what? Wow. All right. We'll take a look at the cut face too, and we'll take a look at this up on the bench. All right. Yeah, I knew the mukite would be spectacular. No doubt about that. Okay, I'm gonna move the saw in and take a quarter-inch slab off, and while that's happening, we'll look at the piece that we already took off. Yeah, there we are. That is nice. That's very nice. Let's see what the next slab looks like. Maybe I'll take a couple slabs off. Okay, so here's the next slab that came off of it. Very interesting. You know what this reminds me of? This stuff reminds me of when we were kids. And we go to the movies. Um, and before the movie started, they would have this, like... I don't know how to describe it. Psychedelic, like, blob stuff up on the movie screen. Kind of like, I don't know, not like a lava lamp, but kind of similar in that all these different colored blobs would be going across the screen in all kinds of patterns, you know. Uh, now they have, you know, commercials until they're ready to start the previews. But back then they had that, that sort of blobby stuff. This is what reminds me of that. Yeah, this is interesting. Let's take a look at the rock in the saw. So I'm looking at the rock, and I'm thinking I should cut another quarter inch off of it. But then I got to thinking, you know, it looks kind of bland right there. I think I'm going to rotate it about 90 degrees clockwise and take a slab off of that face right there. Because that face looks a lot more interesting. And now that I've taken a little off this side, it's not quite so long. I'm not too worried about running out of travel on the saw. So... Yeah, let me rotate it, and we'll cut it. Okay, so I've turned it. I think this face is going to be a little more interesting. I'll take a cut off of it, try and clean it up. Probably won't clean it up all the way across, because it's got a big ding deep in over on this side, but it should go a long way towards cleaning it up. And maybe the next cut could be a full slab, if it looks good. So, let's go. Alright, so here's the first cut off of the other face. It's pretty rough on this side. And, you know, it's not a complete cut. I knew it wouldn't be. So anyway, I cranked it in probably a quarter of an inch or a little more. We're going to get another cut. We should get a little further out. We'll still have probably a, a nick out of it here. But this is interesting. This has got potential. I mean, it's got some purple, yellow, pink, red. Wow. Very cool stuff. Let's see what the next one looks like. All right, let's have a look and see what we got. Oh, a lot of mist is what we got. Ah, the saw is getting hot. It's getting in towards the middle of the afternoon. I've been cutting out here all day. You know, each cut takes 20, 30 minutes. So 
Sauce getting hot. Oil's getting hot. Mist is getting coming off thick. Wow, though. But look, that is so worth it. That is so worth it. Holy moly! Look at that. I knew the mukite would be amazing. I just knew it. I bought the most amazing piece I saw there at the uh, rock shop. Wow. Oh yeah. I am tempted to take another slice off. But the saw is getting really, really hot. And the blade is super hot. Even though it's sitting in a pool of mineral oil, the mineral oil is getting hot. I think we're going to give the saw a break. Maybe we'll come out tomorrow and take another slice or two off the mukite. And, uh, and finish up those bookends I'm making. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, look at that. That is something else, isn't it? Holy cow. That is one hot rock, though. I think we're going to give the saw a break. I think we're going to give it the rest of the day off. And I'll come out tomorrow morning before it gets hot and start cutting again. Now, for you, it'll only be a few seconds. So, I'm thinking tomorrow maybe we'll get a few more slices off the mukite and uh, move on to uh, finishing these bookends over here that need cutting. So I'll see you in the morning. All right, it's the next morning. It's another heat advisory day though. It's uh, gonna be really hot today. And uh, with the oppressive humidity added in, well, it's just not healthy to be outdoors, they say. So I'm getting an early start. I wanna get another slice or two off of this mukite. I'm really loving this mukite. It's good looking stuff. So, Wanna stir it up before it gets too hot with another slice or two of mukite. Ah, all right, and then uh, maybe we can finish those bookends. And who knows? Maybe there'll even be a mystery rock we can throw in here. I was looking through all that stuff I picked up at the rock shops yesterday and found some other stuff that maybe I should probably cut. So, we'll see. This video doesn't get too long. Here we go. Okay. You know, I was thinking it was making a kind of a funny sound. The piece fell down when it was laying against the blade there. Ooh, that is super cool though, huh? Look at that. So what do I want to do with this mukite now? Do I want to keep taking slices off of this face or do I want to try something different? I'll tell you what though, that face is nice. Uh, I'll take one more slice off of it. Then we'll move on to something else, all right? Yeah, because that face is just so nice. A lot going on there. Good looking. All right. So one more slice. Okay, so here's the latest slice. So, uh, good looking stuff. So this was, so I'll put them in order here. So this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth slice, and we got the sixth one going. All right. Now, while we're waiting on that last slice of mukite, um, I have taped together the pieces of this uh, bookends the way I want them to be. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a vertical slice through here to try and uh, make it a little less overhanging and unstable and expose the beautiful internal banding on this side, which will be the side facing out on the bookcase, okay? So, 
I'll also cut off most of the stuff I had to glue back in, which is a bonus, even though it doesn't look too bad. I hit it with, uh, with a flap disc on my grinder, and it, it looks pretty good. You can hardly even see that it's all been glued back together. But still, most of it will be cut off. So that's the plan for next. All right, let's see what this one looks like. That's a nice big slab right there. Wow. Psychedelic blobs in it are amazing. That is something else. All right. I'm going to pull the big chunk of mukite out. We'll take a look at it and this piece up on the bench and then we'll move on nice yeah I knew the mukite was going to be amazing stuff when I bought it cut into so here's the last piece that came off wow just so psychedelic loving it loving it so I'm going to save the rest of this and I'm thinking maybe in the future I might try cutting it on this face See what it looks like under there but uh, for now I'm gonna save it and we're gonna move on yeah we're gonna move on to uh, this bookends thing I'm working on and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tilt it up a little bit so the saw is gonna come through it vertically like this so it won't take off quite so much material over here as it would if it was sitting like this but we should still be able to uh, expose the wonderful internal bands along this whole surface here so that's how I'm gonna put it in the saw tilt it up like that and then clamp down and then we'll just cut right across both pieces and see what we get so let me get it in the saw I'll show you what it looks like in the saw okay it took a little fiddling but I got the rock in more or less the way I want to cut it I mean I would I would like to twist it that way a little bit more I don't know, maybe I'll try before I start it, but it's going to hopefully give me a nice flat finish across this face, exposing the nice internal banding, getting rid of this overhang, most of it anyway, because I've got it tilted back, it'll still overhang a little bit. The rocks are going to be a little asymmetrical, but there's no doubt, not going to be any doubt in anybody's mind they came from the same stone. I mean, you know, it's, it's lumpy. It's got lumps on one side, it doesn't have on the other. So it's going to be asymmetrical. But hey, that just makes it look natural. So, uh, yeah, I may try twisting this a little bit more clockwise just to try and get a more even cut before I start cutting. So let me do that, and then we'll start it cutting. And, well, we'll see what we get. It's my first set of bookends ever. If I don't like them, I'll just throw them out and start over again. i got lots of big rocks I can cut into bookends. Okay, there I've rotated it a little more. We're gonna, the cuts are going to be a little more perpendicular to the cut down the center now, so maybe it'll be a little less asymmetric. But, uh, we're going to cut some nasty lumps off over here, which will be nice, and hopefully expose the banding all along it. Um, I might have to crank it in and get a second cut. It doesn't go in quite as deep as I want at the bottom. We shall see. Um, let's see, my safety chain, I need to lengthen it because this is a long cut. Oops, lengthen it, but not disconnect it. I might wander off during the cut. It's going to take a while. There we go. Alright, so let's get started. <laughs> well, it's the moment of truth. Let's see what happened. Let's see what happened. Oh, yeah. I knew this was going to happen. The oil's all blood red again. Looks like there's been a massacre going on in here. Um, parts I cut off came off in pieces. But that's okay. You know what? These can be tumbled. Let's see what this looks like. Do I need to crank it in and get another cut? I don't think so. Look at that. I think I've accomplished my goal there of exposing the internal banding. Yeah, that face. All right, let's pull these out and have a look at them up on the bench. Try to wipe some of this blood red oil off of them. People think I'm dismembering bodies in here. All right, so let me get these out. We'll take a look at it. 
Well, there they are. My first ever set of bookends. And I think they turned out reasonably good. Um, you can hardly even tell where I glued this piece back on. And I'll give this a uh, flash polish. I just hit it with a flap disc, with sanding flap disc. And that cleaned it up a lot. But I'll get my polishing stuff out and I will give both these surfaces a flash polish here. I may have polished the exposed part that's going to show on the bookshelf a little better. I don't know, that will really bring out the, uh, the subtle banding in there, which is hard to see right now. Counterintuitively, with this stuff, when it's wet with the oil, the bands are not very prominent. I don't know, let me see if I get a good focus on it. But when they dry out, they're a lot more prominent. Normally, when uh, rocks are wet, the patterns show up better, but this, this stuff's different. It, uh, these bands don't really show up all that well when it's wet, with oil anyway. I may, uh, I may hit it with pressure washer with some soapy water to get all the oil off of it. Um, I'll put some uh, felt on the bottom so they don't mar whatever bookcase or bookshelf they're sitting on. And, uh, well, there's my first set of bookends. Okay. And I've got a lot of, I've got a lot of big rocks over there. I could make a lot more bookends. Much prettier. Much prettier than these first ones. I think this is a good rock to practice on because I was only kind of liking it, you know? So, if I'd screwed it up, I wouldn't have cried. But I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be cool. You know, once I get the oil off of it and uh, give it a little bit of a polish on these exposed surfaces, I think it's going to be a cool set of bookends. Oh, and I've got all these pieces that I just cut off that I can tumble. I might need to break them up or cut them again into smaller pieces. Tumble them up, see what they look like. I'll bet they'll look amazing tumbled. The bands will be subtle, but I'll bet they'll be very pretty. All right, so I talked about possibly a bonus rock. So what do we got? Well, we got this thing right here. This agony thing right here. I picked this up at the first rock shop we visited in South Dakota on our rock shop for all Whitakers. I think I just paid a couple bucks for it. Um, it's definitely all agony on the inside. It's very uh, fractured over here. Um, I would like to take this surface off and see what it's like underneath. And there's a knob up here on top, which is going to make it hard to get it in the saw. And I was thinking, well, I just cut this knob off first. But then I thought, you know what? There might be interesting stuff inside that knob. So I'm going to try and get it in the saw and clean up this face and then take a cut through this knob and see what it looks like. So that's my plan. Let me see if I can get this thing in the saw and do that. I don't know. It's kind of irregular. Might be difficult, but let me try. Okay, I've got our little agate in there. Getting it in was not easy. The bottom is so irregular that I had to do, use the same trick I did on the bookends. I jammed a piece of wood under it so it wouldn't twist under the clamping force. So first cut is just going to be a skin cut across the face. Hopefully it's in there tight enough. I'm afraid to tighten it down too much. So I'm afraid it might twist even with the wood under there. And then uh, after the facing cut, I'll crank it in and we'll take a slab off and see what it looks like. All right, let me get the saw started. This is going to be a fairly quick cut. Probably less than 10 minutes. Which is good because it's starting to get hot out here already. Okay, well that was a bit of a disaster. It had barely started cutting and I heard a thud. And I'm like, that's way too soon. Yep. This thing worked its way out. In spite of how I had it jammed in there. Hmm. Well, try, try again, I guess. Let's see if I can get it in. This may take a while, so let me fiddle with it. And I'll be back. Alright, I flipped the rock upside down, and I think it clamps in a little better that way. At least I'm hoping it will. So let's try it again. Okay, this time it sounded like we got a cut. So, let's have a look. Yeah, okay. We didn't get a slab. We got a few pieces off. But that's what I was expecting. But at least it stayed in there. So... Uh-oh, now it's moving. 
tighten it down again before I take the next cut. Try, try getting a slab off of it. I can get this in here good and tight again. And hopefully not move. We'll uh, try getting a slab. You are just a problem child, aren't you? like it's in there tight, but I guess the saw pressure and vibrations get it moving. I'll try to get the slab off of it here. May or may not work. It looks like it's agate, so I probably shouldn't have to take too thick a slab for it to hold it together. My main concern is it not popping out of this awful vice. This actually might have been a rock to keep until after I modified the saw and got the new vice in it. But we shall give it a try today. Okay, this time it sounded more normal, like we actually got a cut. Let's see, ah, there's a slab down there. Yes, there is. Let's see what the slab looks like. Let's see what the face of the rock looks like. Ooh, that is translucent. That is translucent. That's very agate -y. You can see through that. We'll look at that up on the bench. And we'll look at the rock, too. And decide what we want to do next, if anything. Okay, so here's the rock, and here's the slab I cut off. You can see how translucent it is. Let me hold it up to the light for you. See if I can get it focused. Look at that. Wow. That is nice. That is some nice agony stuff right there. All right. Yeah, I was thinking this would be cool on the inside. And you know what? I almost cut this knob off up here. I don't know if it's showing up. But it looks like it's got some interesting colors in it. I think I need to take some thin slices through this knob. I, this, stuff's, this stuff's super, super tough. I could take thinner slices than this. Take some thin slices through this knob and see what kind of color banding is going on in there. Because that looks interesting. But... But I think I'm going to have to wait till I get my better vise in the saw because this thing is just too difficult to hold on to in there right now. So I think that'll be the last cut for today. Well, for two days, actually, I've been going at this. But boy, look at what we got accomplished here. Holy cow. Let me get my bookends in the field of view over here. There's so much stuff. I can't get it all in the field of view. But yeah, wow. The saw's been busy, let me tell you. Yep, uh, the tiger eye, which is just incredible. Um, the other Australian jasper, which I believe is called Pingaling jasper. My mystery, $4 mystery rock, which turned out to be actually really pretty inside. Uh, the mookite, which is just amazingly psychedelic inside. Uh, we got this, uh, this agate here I cut at the end, and we got a set of bookends I've made. Which, as they're slowly drying out, the oil's drying out, the, uh, the patterns on them are looking nicer and nicer. So, yeah, I think this was a really good session with the saw. I had a lot of fun. I hope you folks had a lot of fun seeing what's inside these rocks. If so, give the video a like. Give it a thumbs up. And subscribe to see my future videos. There'll be more lapidary videos in the future, plus gold recovery videos, prospecting videos, all kinds of stuff. So subscribe to see those videos. And check out my second channel, Electric Geek 64 If you are at all interested in electronics or retro computing, you might find something there of interest to you. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye.